how the labor unions are now reacting to it. The Nigeria Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria have issued a 14-day nationwide strike, uh, and it's a warning to the federal government. It's actually a strike warning. The grievance is that the 16-point agreement reached between organized labor and the federal government in October last year has not been implemented. Leaders of the NLC and TUC say they are disappointed that despite organized labor's attempts to maintain industrial peace, government appears unconcerned about widespread suffering and misery. Now, the October 2 agreement was focused on addressing the massive suffering and the social economic consequences of the hike in the price of PMS and the devaluation of the Naira. NLC and TUC in a statement uh, did say that, that they are compelled to resort to these measures, uh, but that the persistent neglect what they call a neglect of welfare of citizens and Nigerian workers, as well as um, Machi, has left them with no choice. And I recall that um, the House of Representatives uh, called the summoned the economic team of this administration, and they're quite optimistic that things are going to get better. As a matter of fact, the governor talked about the inflation rate coming down significantly in a matter of weeks. And talking about the socio-economic impact of government policies, a federal high court in Nikoi in Lagos here has ordered that the prices of some basic goods and petroleum products be fixed within seven days. Specifically, the court ordered government to control the prices of milk, flour, salt, sugar, spare parts of vehicles, uh, petroleum products um, that are listed by the court, for instance, um, for price control include diesel, uh, petrol, motor spirit, uh, premium motor spirit known as petrol, and kerosene. The judge, Amd Lewis Alagua, issued uh, the, press, the, the price control order after listening to an application by human rights lawyer Femi Falano. Meanwhile, President Bola Tinubu has directed the Special Presidential Committee on Food on Emergency Food Intervention to immediately step into the worsening food security crisis in the country and stem the tide. Minister of Information and National Orientation Mohamed Idris, who disclosed this to journalists at the State House of Abuja on Tuesday uh, after the committee's meeting, also gave assurances that there is no food shortage in the country. Interesting development, and we're following that very closely. I'm joined now by former president of the Nigerian Medical Association, is also governorship aspirant in Ondose, Professor Dayo Faduile. He joins me live from Accra. Prof, thank you for joining us on the program. Let's begin with your own evaluation of the economic realities of the people, particularly as regards um, the purchase in power and cost of living as we know it, months into this administration. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. Um, we have had a series of uh, difficult moments for the people in uh, Nigeria, and uh, there is no chance to the removal of uh, petroleum uh, or petrol subsidy by the federal government. And uh, the expected palliative that's supposed to uh, percolate to the uh, lower level looks as if it's not getting to where it's supposed to be. Uh, and in that respect, we have had very high increase in uh, food prices. The uh, transportation uh, cost is very high. Uh, the production cost has increased astronomically. And I think I want to align with uh, that judgment that we cannot allow things to just uh, uh, go without some form of uh, control by the government. And uh, in this wise, it is imperative for the government to ensure that uh, uh, they, they halt it. Otherwise, a lot of people in this country are not finding it funny at present. Your party, the APC, has alleged that the opposition uh, are now instigating unsuspecting youths to protest against the cost of living following the protest we've seen in Niger and Kano states on Monday. Um, do you subscribe to the thinking that these protests may have, uh, may, may have been hijacked politically? No doubt. It is not a very great or good time for Nigerians. No doubt about that. But if you look at the caliber of people who are protesting and the way they are going, you see that uh, 
uh, it has some sinister more from uh, people from other levels. And I think it is on this basis that uh, the APC has this conviction that it could not just be a spontaneous thing. Everybody is suffering. The government is trying its best, though it may not uh, be adequate for everybody. But uh, we have had the support of all Nigerians in the last uh, few months uh, towards uh, believing that uh, government has some good things that is put in place. Uh, we should not forget that Nigeria was on the brink of collapse because uh, the government cannot pay salary by the time uh, the current administration uh, came in because uh, of uh, the high subsidy price that was almost crippling the economy. Today, we have some form of money that the government can uh, use to improve the infrastructure and other things. However, I think the government still needs to do more so that people can eat and people can feel uh, better and they can see that hope and then, coming very soon that we have expected. Mr. President has now activated the Special Presidential Committee on Emergency Food Intervention. And we're following that development closely and see how much impact it will have on the price of food in the coming days. But let's talk about you for a minute. A lot have been said about your impact on doctors government relationship while you were at the hems of affairs at the nma leadership um, just two weeks ago resident doctors at the enugu state university of science and technology teaching hospital announced plans to embark on an indefinite strike over what they call shortage of doctors and insecurity in the state it will seem that we haven't seen much of a disagreement on the national level how well would you say this administration is faring in that regard well, I think just to save the citizens of this country from uh, uh, this protracted or recurrent strike, that uh, the doctors have become a little bit wary uh, wielding that sword. And the truth about it is that many of our colleagues and other health professionals are targeted in the kidnapping cases that we have all around. Mm. In fact, we are getting to a situation in which many of them are being molested at their workplace. And these are things that will make anybody to be afraid uh, to do his work with uh, all, uh, all interest. Again, we have to also appreciate the efforts that uh, the Nigeria Medical Association uh, had put in place to have all health workers to work uh, as a unit body. Uh, if you remember, sometimes ago, before I became the president of Nigeria Medical Association, there were discussing tools between doctors, nurses, pharmacists, lab scientists, and other health uh, professionals. But we were able to bring all of us together, and then we thank God uh, from that moment we have uh, agreed that the king in the health institution uh, the, is the patient. And uh, since we have seen the patient as the central uh, gravity that brings all of us together mm. we are forced to uh improve things and get things done Indeed. however the government has not done very well especially the uh, state government because we tend to uh, see strikes as a weapon against the federal government many state governments are not employing doctors if if you recall um, for example in uh, every state when the new governor came in, there were only 17 doctors in the employment of Ebony State, and they have over, over 15 or 16 uh, general hospitals. Mm. So it means that many general hospitals do not have more than one, and some may not even have. And these are things that we have seen. And a lot of doctors are living in droves like other health workers, and they need to be replaced. Yeah. And these are some of the things that are causing mm. all this uh, uh, entropy within the system. So we have the Minister of State for um, Health on the show last week, and we were talking about the waiver recently given by the federal government to teaching hospitals to hire. On one hand, the Minister of Health is giving um, this hospitals was to recruit more. But on the other hand, some workers aren't getting paid and others are being laid off. I'm sure you're following the developments in OAU teaching hospital. How does this add up for you? Well, that is the malady that we are facing in this country. 
why you are using one hand to say you are doing something to improve uh, the health system. On the other hand, you are failing to uh, uh, ensure that your obligation is done. And in this respect, it is nice that uh, we are having that waiver. You see, bureaucracy has created havoc in employment of doctors and other health workers in a different hospitals. If you have to wait for the length of time that uh, you, 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 can, you can recruit doctor or other health workers, I will tell you it can be up to six months, and sometimes it's almost forever. And in that time, during those periods, it's the patient that will suffer. And now that they are giving that waiver, that is, that, that is, a, that is a good uh, decision. Again, it is important for the government to ensure that the different funding, the different intervention funds, and other uh, things that they have promised to make life better in treating a uh, seeming population who are sick are provided. Many hospitals do not have the uh, necessary requisite of equipment to teach, uh, to treat our patients. And it caused a lot of uh, frustration on health workers. And these are some of the reasons why we have a lot of people who are frustrated and who just want to leave the system and go to a place in which you can have everything in place. That is aside the remuneration that is poor generally. Very interesting. We don't have much time. So let's talk about your governorship ambition in Ondo. <laughs> in 2020, they said Prof was working for the emergence of some particular aspirants in that election, which your team eventually denied at the time. But how optimistic are you about getting the ticket this time? Well, uh, the difference between 2020 and 2024 now is that I had taken time to learn the art of administration in the state. Uh, I have to give thanks to the uh, governor of Fondo State, Arapuni Oluwaru Timiakri, the Louis CNCON, who made me a member of uh, the cabinet. And I have had a lot of experience in the last two years plus that I have worked as uh, the special advisor to the governor on health. But importantly, uh, when we look at the zoning, uh, it is believed that uh, every zone uh, the south, the, the, the north senatorial district should have its own two slots. And uh, at that time, I was uh, advised that since the current governor had just uh, served the first tenure, and it is actually coming to the south in the second, after his, after his, after completing his tenure, that it is good for you to just wait till it comes to us. So mm -hmm. there is no reason, there is no equivalence that is stopping me. I have had much more experience, apart from the experience that I've had as an administrator, a president of Nigeria Medical Association, and not only a president, a successful one, for that matter. I have also led the doctors, the entire doctors in Lagos State, and I did very well. As a professor, I have also had a lot of administrative experience in, uh, in, in, in the art of getting things done. It's so not, it's, it is not campaign time yet, Prof. Let us talk about, um, you know, when you say there are no encumbrances, um, I like the fact that you mentioned that you were SE on health matters to the former governor. Are you concerned about his legacies in Ondo, considering the part also that marked his final days in office and how that, some say, may affect the chances of those who were close to him? Well, it depends on the angle you are looking at it. The first thing we have to understand is that Governor Roti Miyakiri Dolu did very well for this state. I can tell you in terms of health, where I so pretend at uh, the Ondo State Country Health Commission is an award-winning uh, uh, department or uh, department or agency in Nigeria. We are doing very well, and uh, the Ondo State. Uh, uh, University of Medicine, Medical Science uh, Teaching Hospital. Yeah, uh, these two gigantic uh, buildings that are coming up with all the plans to equip it to a state of art uh, uh, level. And these are great sites. Again, the Ondo State uh, Primary Healthcare uh, Development Agency has consistently been an 
a multi award winning uh, agency. So, I want to say that the legacy of Mr. Governor will be further uh, sustained and improved upon. However, what happened towards the death of Mr. Governor is uh, really unfortunate, uh, but it is, it is part of politics, as they have always said. Mm. And I think the government of Ondo State, the people of Ondo State, has taken that beyond them, especially when finally we lost our very dear governor. And uh, we are hoping that they can get uh, him rested very well in the, in the next couple of days. Indeed. But I can tell you my chances mm. of uh, clinching uh, the ticket and winning this state is very high. By the way, I spoke with the former Commissioner for Finance, uh, Wale Akinterua. I'm sure you know him very well. Who said Aketi endorsed him before he died as the next governor? Does that bother you? Well, I, I, I think anybody can say anything. You don't believe it? The, the truth about it is that uh, uh, they say it takes two to tango. Uh, in this respect, the second person is not, uh, it's not there to confirm it. And there is no uh, any weakness around. Uh, well, I can tell you too that uh, uh, Akredolu came into the closet of his bedroom and told me this thing. Now, wait for me. Uh, who will define me? Who will, who will say that it's not right? I, I want to leave it to him, uh, but I know that I'm one of uh, the very best that Akredolu. Prof, you are sounding for. you are sounding like you don't believe him. Are you saying that Mr. Akintarewa lied? I am saying that I think Mr. Governor will consider me as a very good candidate to succeed him. I have that conviction. Uh, what he told uh, Mr. Kipter, if he ever tells him that, is between him and Dr. Kipter, and uh, it's very difficult for you to say, look, uh, it is. Uh, uh, it would have been nice if we have a, a witness. It would have been nice. <laughs> but, uh, but now that we don't have a witness, we leave him to uh, his statement and uh, but I know that uh, Mr. Governor has a lot of respect for me, and uh, I, I, I had some very good interaction with him. And did you, he, did you, did you share with him like, your ambition to run in 2024? Certainly, certainly, I had a discussion with him in 2020 before I decided to work with him, and uh, there had been some discussion but it, it, it's, it's not possible for me to be bringing them here because it's not here to corroborate it and um, what use will i be bringing it here the important thing is that it is not a one-man show it is for the entire on those state people to see who is the best to govern them so let me talk to the people let me showcase what i have learned let me showcase my experience and my my my, my manifesto rather than just waiting to be poured oil on porn and say now nah, you're the next king it's not, uh, it's not Talk, a talking case. about the APC ticket, Prof, um, he's not declared yet, but the chances are high that the new governor is also after the ticket. What are your chances against an incumbent? Because in 2020, uh, you didn't get it against an incumbent. Yes, I didn't get it because I had no contest with him. I had to work with him based on prevailing uh, uh, situation when it was stated that... Uh, it's better for this North Korea district to have the second, uh, uh, the second half. Uh, that is uh, accredited to complete its two terms. But now that it is coming to us, I do. You need to see my CV. You need to see what I have done. You need to see the experience I have gathered. And I know those state people. There are not people who follow frivolities. There are not people who uh, obey the wind. There are not people who just. Uh, uh, do vain uh, races, they will have to look at what you have, what you have done, and what you want to do. And believe you me, God, before he calls anybody, you have showcased what you can do. I have, I have done that. And I am proud to say, in all areas that I have found myself, I have come out with telling uh, results that mm -hmm. people praise, praise me when I leave. You know, some have commended the what seem a gentleman arrangement in Ondo where everyone just knows the next senatorial district where the next governor will come from. And um, they say it's from the south this time. 90% uh, of those who have come out to seem to have come from that part of the state. How, how did the state 
arrive at this at this arrangement well the convention or this gentleman uh, uh, arrangement has been a thing that it is not clear cut uh, at every instance that uh, governor credo look contested we have people from other zone contesting with him even before him when uh, governor uh, Mimiko was the governor we have other people from different other zones contesting against him but like how nature will set its own thing. After Governor Mimiko in Central completed his two terms, he tried to bring another central person who is from Akure. But nature took it to north. And in the north, when he was contesting again, nature allowed him to do it two terms. So by, by, by that natural occurrence, certainly it goes to the south. Because uh, the south started it if we want to use uh, go through that way with Agagu, Mimiko. Now we have uh, uh, the northern uh, senatorial district. So, naturally it goes to that. And everybody is set on that. Uh, it is not uh, casting stone, but I think all on those state uh, citizens has agreed to it. That, look, let it go to start for equity. For equity uh, amongst uh, the different uh, senatorial districts. That's our time. Perhaps the next time we have this conversation, we'll be talking about what you think are the challenges ahead you know, of this election, particularly among Ondo people who would decide who the next governor is. Professor Dayo Fadile is former president of the Nigeria Medical Association and governorship aspirant in the Ondo State governorship election. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you very much. My pleasure. And that's our program today. You can watch it again at midnight and at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I am Nifemi. Welcome to you. I'm back on the news at 7. Stay with us, everyone.